And now let's go ahead and implement the jump. So the jump is going to use the the has jumped method that we created here. Um, or I guess we haven't created it yet. So let's go ahead and create that right now. So we have this. Um, yeah, let's let's have a state in here to represent whether or not we've jumped yet. So let's go ahead and do private boolean jumped and let's just initialize that to false. So this is just going to be a variable that represents whether our character has jumped or not. And let's just go ahead and do a getter and a setter for this. So let's do public boolean has jumped and return jumped. And let's go ahead and do public void set jumped. And let's go ahead and pass in a boolean has jumped. And let's go ahead and set it to um, the value has jumped. Okay. So we have a getter and a setter for that now. And now we want to go ahead and use that um, getter and setter in this in this function. So let's go ahead and do that. So we want to first ensure that the player is not currently jumping. So if we're on the ground and we're not jumping, then we want to do something where we want to be able to jump. So let's go ahead and check. So handler dot get player dot has jumped. So if our player has not jumped yet, so if it's not jumping, then we want to go ahead and update the player so that it jumps. So handler dot get player dot set velocity y to negative fifteen. Now remember I went over this in the the uh, one of the previous episodes, but and let me open up paint here real quick. Our coordinate system looks like this. So this is going to be zero zero up here. So zero zero and this is going to be one zero and this is going to be zero one okay so going this way is going to be positive in the y and going this way is going to be positive in the x so we want our player to go in this direction right we want our player to jump upwards and so we want to set a negative velocity here and that will make our player jump up okay so let's go ahead and do so now we have that and let's go ahead and set our key down now to true so let's have the the element at index 0 to be true or to rep, sorry to represent the the y button being pressed down and let's go ahead and set that to true and now let's go ahead and use our setter that we just created in the player class um, to set the jumped to true because now we've jumped. So handler dot get player dot set jumped to true. So now if we finish through this key pressed and we come back here, we're going to and we try to press W again, we're going to get here and because jumped is set to true, we're not going to be able to jump again. So this prevents double jumping, triple jumping and jumping forever. It's only going to allow us to jump once. Um, and so we're going to eventually have to set jumped to false. And that's what we're going to do next in the key released method. Let's go ahead and do that. So like key pressed, key release also um, it is also a method from the key adapter 
abstract class. And so let's go ahead and implement that. So at override, and let's do public void key released. And let's do key event E. And we're getting near the bottom, so let's just create some spaces down here. So here we want to do this uh, very similar thing to what we did before. So we want to do int key is equal to e dot get key code. And below here we want to have a bunch of if statements. Let's do if let's have a space here. So if key is equal to key event dot virtual key w. And then we want to do something. If we are equal to key event virtual key A, then we want to do something. If we are equal to key event dot virtual key D, then we want to do something. And if um, uh, we'll, we'll implement this after, but let's just for now just do, yeah, let's just have this statement here. For now. So let's start with this one. So in here, all we want to do is set the key down to false. So up here, we enabled key down. Down here, we just want to go ahead and disable them. So let's go ahead and implement that. So we want to do key down zero is equal to false. We want to do key down one is equal to false. And we want to do key down two is equal to false. So we just undo these key downs, um, now saying that we're no longer pressing these keys when they are released. And in here, we want to have a check. So if key down, so if key down one is false, and key down two is false, so what this is saying is if both A and D are released, then we want to set the velocity of the player to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's get the player and let's set the velocity to zero. Right, so if we're no longer holding down either A or D, then we just want to set the velocity to zero. So that makes sense. And now we're done with this key input class. And I know that there's a, you know, a couple things that aren't being used here. So for example, we have an extra key down here um, that we, we might use later down the road for, for some other key. Um, say if we want Mario to be able to shoot fire, then we might want to tie that to another key. And we also have this key down zero that we're just setting to true and setting this to false here, but we're not really using that anywhere. That I just implemented that for to, to be thorough, but it's not really doing anything. So you can actually remove that code if you want, but we'll just keep it here for now in case there's a use for it later, uh, later down the road. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and go back to our, our, our game class. And we want to go ahead and register our key, um, our, or we want to create our key input class that we just created. So we want to create um, an instance of it. And then we want to go ahead and pass that into the um, or add it as a key listener to our our game class. And really we're adding it to our, our canvas. And so let's go ahead and do that. So right under here, 
under our, our handler, let's go ahead and do this dot add key listener. Right, so we want to add a new, um, um, well, yeah, add a new key listener. And in here, we want to go ahead and create an object and do new key input. And let's go ahead and pass in our handler. And let's go ahead and import this. And so remember, because we extended the, let's go back here. So because we extended the key adapter, um, it allows our key input class to now become a key event listener. And so now that's a, now that it's a key event listener, we can go ahead and add it here to this canvas. And so whenever a key is pressed, um, the listener will listen to that event and it will shoot off this method. And likewise, whenever a key gets released, the listener will be listening for that and uh, listening for that event. And when it occurs, then it will be, um, this method will get executed. So now we have our key listener and we can go ahead and run this to make sure that things run properly. So let's go ahead and, and run this. And we have our player from last time and we're still showing the pounding boxes. Let's go ahead and click the screen to, to set it as focus. And yeah, so we press D, we press A. You notice that it's moving now left and right. And let's go ahead and do a jump. So let's press W. And remember, we don't have gravity, so it's just going to go up infinitely for now. So let's go ahead and bring our gravity back real quick, just because that was a temporary um, removal from last time. So let's go back to our player class and, and comment that. And let's go ahead and run this again. So now we're going to be falling, and let's jump real quick. So you saw that before it fell off the screen, it just jumped real quick. So yeah. That's pretty much it for this episode. Um, I hope you learned a lot and I hope you enjoyed it. In the next episode, we'll likely be going back to collision detection to finish up um, some things. So, so now that we have some key input, we can progress with our collision detection and we can start creating the map and, and having our player move within that map. So stay tuned. Next time, things will get more interesting. Um, and with that, that's pretty much the end of this episode. Please remember to like and subscribe. Um, let's try to get 200 likes this video. I know that's pretty ambitious, but let's try to get to that. Um, you know, getting likes and getting feedbacks and subscribes, those really motivate me to keep making these videos. So. Um, yeah, I would really, really appreciate it um, if you guys left a like and subscribed. But yeah, with that, uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you all in the next video. See you.